The greatest hallmark of a true disciple of Christ who has allowed the Holy Spirit to purify their hearts and transform them is their love for the brethren. As Jesus said in John chapter 13, verse 34, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you love one another. And yet, it's totally normal and natural for us to struggle to love our brothers and sisters in Christ as well as our neighbor before we have fully submitted to God's love, to the love of Christ poured out on us at Pentecost via the Holy Spirit. Most of us haven't been taught how to access and receive that love. And I'm here to tell you that the way we love our brothers and sisters, the way we love one another and everyone else in this world is not by our own willpower and not by our own flesh. And it's a subtle distinction and a subtle shift, but it is so deep and profound. I wanted to talk about it today with you. It can be very easy to get frustrated with other people when they aren't growing and evolving with the Lord. They may hurt us, but the key is truly receiving the love of Christ, is spending time deep in communion and fellowship with the Lord himself, which we can all do in the secret place with God by focusing on our love for him and our hearts, allowing his love to meet us with no expectations. Because once we begin to receive more and more and more of him, our hearts will begin to overflow with love for one another naturally. And so essentially the solution is not focusing at all on other people's growth, not focusing at all on other people's process and journey with the Lord, but turning back in ourselves so that he can transform our flesh with his spirit, which essentially is purified by the fires of his passionate love for us. And it's hard to receive that love when we get caught up in religious duty and obligation going through a checklist of all the things we're supposed to do every day in our devotional time in order for God to love us and all the things we're not supposed to do. But friends, when our Lord descended from heaven and revealed his beautiful heart to me, I understood that there was no judgment, shame, or condemnation in his love and that that love was the most powerful healing force in all the cosmos and that that love is directed at us and he is just waiting for us as his vessels members of his ecclesia, his beloved church, to receive more and more of that love so we can be transformed by it to become more patient, to become more gracious, to become more forgiving, more kind, more persevering, as Galatians describes the fruits of the Spirit in chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. Notice that it's not the fruits of our flesh, but the fruits of the Spirit that we receive when we allow his Spirit in to do that transforming work. And often I found the quickest way to do that is to simply tell the Lord that I need him. Something like, Lord, I'm struggling to love the brethren. They're really challenging me right now. Can you help me? Can you purify and transform my heart so I can be more loving? And subtly over the next hours or days or weeks, I'll notice a shift beginning to happen within me. He'll bring things to my mind and direct my thoughts. He'll pour more of his love into me until I'm overflowing with it again and I have more peace and patience to give. But we can't give from an empty cup. As Psalm 23 says, my cup overflows, my cup runs over. And when we spend that time with him every day, building our sacred union, our marriage with Christ personally, individually, that cup will begin to overflow. And we will naturally just exhibit the fruits of his spirit, not by the works of our own willpower or flesh, but by the works of his spirit in us, if that makes sense. Because his eternal plan and purpose is for his beloved church, his bride of which we are members, to reveal more and more of that love, his magnificent, radiant glory and beauty to the world, that they too might be drawn to him, but we cannot do that from our own flesh, as he gave me the other morning. Flesh cannot transform flesh. Only his life-giving spirit, the tree of life himself, the bread of life, our living waters, can infuse us. But with that indwelling life, he came not to just die for our sins, but to give us so that we may be lifted up and out of this world with him into that life in spite of it. And learning to do that with him in the quiet place has led me to rejoice every day and be glad that I'm alive no matter what trials I face, no matter the tribulations, no matter the challenges from the world or the people around me. 
I'm just overflowing with life and joy and peace. And so we know Jesus said, love your enemies, bless them, don't curse them. But we cannot do that without his life-giving spirit. That is the secret. That is the mystery of the ages. That we were meant for God to tabernacle, to dwell among us from the beginning until our separation at the fall. And that we are all part of that inheritance. He is our inheritance through the spirit once we begin to receive him. And so I encourage you to do that in a natural, organic way, to spend some time each day with the Lord, just focusing on your love of him beneath the surface that most of us receive in the religious system. Although that surface is beautiful, his depths are limitless and endless. And he began to reveal more and more and more of them to me. And I'm so overjoyed to begin to share them with the world and with you all, overflowing with his abundant life, with so much energy, so much peace, so much patience, so much joy, so much love that I don't even know what to do with myself because receiving his indwelling life was what fully and truly healed me. And I want to help others learn how to do that, that they may turn to him and him alone for their discipleship, for everything they need. And so wherever you're at with that, I'm sending you so much love. I hope you found this helpful. God bless you and keep you until next time, friends.